Hi guys, welcome to today's video. If you are new here, my name is Samantha. This is the Budget Mum UK and this channel is also with budgeting, financing, saving money, not spending money, just generally living a great life without having to spend too much cash and loads of different ways that we can do it. We do cash stuffing, do budgeting, do finance. This video has been much requested because I feel like at this time of year, when people are more likely to spend quite a bit of cash, we're a lot more aware of how much we've got and then we start to make plans already for January in the new year with it being like kind of a, a reset time, a time where we can sit down and start to make those resolutions and things that we want to do. And we start to sort of build our own little ideas in our mind of how we could maybe have a better next year. So a better 2024 for us. So in the last 12 months, I set myself a challenge of saving up to £10,000, which I managed to achieve in less than the 12 months and I do have a video that's going to come out on that in a couple of weeks but I wanted to give those ideas to you now and talk to you about how having a no spend or a no buy or a no or even low buy year could help you to achieve similar goals or something of that else. So I'm just going to talk through some of the things that I do and that I am most likely going to do again coming next year because next year I have got a really big goal I really want to hit, which kind of brings me to my first point. Point number one on how you can have a really successful no spend or no buy or low buy year would be first of all to understand your why. If you have a goal, a reason or a purpose for something, it is so much easier to achieve that goal than if you just decide to go out and do something willy nilly. So for me, my why is kind of twofold my background, my history, my, my family is that I've got two children, a 15 year old, very soon to be 16 year old and a three year old child. And for us, we've had quite a long hard slog of the last sort of 10 years. And I've just got to the point now where I've got rid of lots of my debt, over a hundred thousand pounds worth of debt. And at the point now where I'm starting to save and I'm making massive inroads into saving because I've had to live such a frugal life for such a long time. And I've done it for them. They've always been my, my base why, they're always my, my starting point. So if you've got children and you're wondering how you can do a no spend, low spend, no buy year, then this hopefully will give you a bit of a, a starting block. So they're, they're my pinnacle, they're my reason why. But on top of that, I now want to uh, buy property. So that's gonna be my next step. I used to own my own business, I used to own my own house. And then for various reasons, which you can find on this channel, it all went quite wrong. I've just basically spent the last few years putting things in place and getting right. And it means I don't currently own my own property. I just I house share with somebody and I would love to have our own home somewhere with big bedrooms where the children can have one each. And um, just that's, that's going to be my why going forward. I also have another why, which is years ago when I did have money, I promised my daughter I would take her to New York when she was 16 for her 16th birthday. And even though that's quite a superficial why, I would love to get to that point this year or next year rather, <laughs> when you get this video, um, I would love to be able to get there and go and done it and, and have that as a, a treat and almost like a reward at the end of everything that we've, we've done and gone through and experienced. So my main one would be to get a, a property. But then my next one would be this, this stop trip, really. So those are my whys. And I think for me, I would be saying, look at your own circumstances. Look at your reasons of why you want to have an old buy year or a no spend year. Is it because, you know, you, you want to save up for something significant? Or is it because you find yourself increasingly in debt and you're not sure how to get out of it? In that case, then, of course, there's always other churches out there that can help you. And I would encourage you to reach out to get that help because they will definitely help you on your way of having your no spend or no buy year. If you've got something that's quite sentimental, sometimes that can be really helpful. What I might encourage you to do then is to reinforce that why. So for example, you might have a, a visual image. So I've got a picture of my kids out and they're, they're my why. I see it every single day. They're, they're the reason I, I get up in the morning. But then maybe I might, haven't done it yet, but I could possibly put a picture of New York or, you know, the Statue of Liberty, something on there that'll make me go, this is what I'm doing today. And it's just that, that refocusing. So maybe have it by your front door. So as you're about to leave the day, you can go, right, I'm not going to be taking my bank card with me because... And here's my reason. And there's your picture, there's your visual image. Research has shown us that visual learning and that kind of reminder, the subliminal reminders have a really high success rate. So if we just 
think about it daily, then that's one thing. You have to remember to think about it. But if you're putting the image right in front of you where you're going to pass by every single day, you are going to remember and you are going to be successful. So that would be something I would encourage you to do and keep revisiting that why as well. And whenever you feel, oh, you know, this is too much for me. I really, I've got the urge to spend. I really would love to go and buy X, Y, and Z come back and visit that why and if it's always there if it's always prominent it's a lot easier to do that and stay refocused and, and start again even if you fall off the bandwagon even if you go do you know what fell off today and it's i've bought so much of whatever it is you know your vices i kind of liken it to like going to one of these um weight watchers type, type clubs where you know you've had a bad day you've eaten all the food in the house that doesn't mean that you stop then that means let's start again tomorrow let's just refocus let's regroup and just go okay, that, that one thing happened, whatever it was, tomorrow is a new day, we're going to start again and we're going to get even more focused this time. It doesn't mean just because you've fallen off that that's the end of the game. It just does not work like that because otherwise everything would just be going crazy. The next thing I might encourage you to do is to take a bit of an inventory. Now you can do this in whatever means that might be to yourself. At this time of year, just before Christmas, it's not unusual for us to have a massive clear out of all our things, all the things that have got the surface because we want to try and declutter, we want to try and reduce the amount of things in the house, especially if we want to have visitors over. We want to get the place a bit more spick and span, a bit more organised because we know Father Christmas is coming, he's going to be bringing lots more presents and other things, especially if you've got children and we've kind of had that bit of a sort out. What I would say to you is if you can, and it could be quite onerous depending on your lifestyle, maybe visit each room, have a look around. It doesn't have to be a really extensive list, but it could be something that's quite a significant one where you're itemising massive items that you've got in your room. If you find you've got duplicates of something, get it sold. Whatever those things are, jot them down on a list and that means that you're then reminding yourself that you own them. You can look at the state or the condition that they're in. You might be quite pleasantly surprised that things that you've had for a while aren't as bad as you think they might be. And just remind you that you don't need to buy anything new of that this year. So you could go into the front room and maybe look at your sofa and think, you know what, I've had this sofa six, seven, eight years. There's gonna be a great sale on in January. But actually, by taking this little bit of an inventory, doing a bit of a cursory walk around, you might realise there's absolutely nothing wrong with that sofa. It might not be your favourite colour anymore, but then put a throw over it or a blanket, something else that you have got. It's just that reminder of things that you already own, things that are already in great condition, things that you've got a surplus of, you can then resell. Or perhaps this then kind of lends into the next part of what I might say could be a bit of a discretionary area for your no-spend year. Whereas if you're selling something, then you might be able to put it into a pot and put it towards something that you do want to buy and only when there's actually money in that I get to treat myself kind of pot and not just because you want something. The next thing is we do need to be realistic. It, it is not a given thing that you will go through every single day and not buy a thing. We need to eat for one thing. We need to stay clean for another thing. But this section here is where you would write down all the things that you are allowed to buy. And again, up to you entirely. But if, if it was me, I'd be writing it down and putting it up on a list on my wall or on my fridge or on the door or in the bedroom. Somewhere I know I'm going to see it, the things that I am allowed to buy. So for me, the things that obviously I'm going to be allowed to buy are things like groceries, things like toiletries, but only buying them when I need them, when I've actually run out. I'm actually going to buy in bulk and I've already got a massive load of toilet roll, for example, and washing powder and, uh, and softener. I don't buy them very often, probably buy them once, maybe twice a year because I will buy a job lot from Costco and that's me done. So I don't have to then get tempted to go to these big stores and then be tempted to buy other things. So for me, that kind of works for, for my mindset and how, how my brain works. But what I would say to you is just those are the things that you are allowed. Think about personal hygiene items, whether that is you know, deodorants or feminine hygiene products, whatever that is that works for you. I also need petrol because I do need to get out and about to work and take the children to school and other things like that. Medication, if you need to pay for medication, obviously, you know, we can't go without that. That's got to be a given. But then as you go through your list, you might find yourself thinking twice about the things that go on there. Thinking, well, what about if I want to spend something on coffee every week what if I want to have that cup then that isn't what this is that would be a low spend year maybe you give yourself a, a reduced budget if that's your thing that's your vice but then that could be sort of 
something you look at a little bit later on. There are also other options where sometimes you might be used to buying something, but you could actually get it for free. So for example, if you love books, which I do, maybe think, well, actually, I'm going to join the library instead. And it gets me out a little bit more, and do a bit more socialising. Or your Kindle that you forgot about, that's been buried under the sofa for goodness knows how long. You'll find it when you come to do your decluttering, your itemising. Or think about maybe doing a book swap with friends, but post it on your Facebook or on your socials. Say, look, I've got X, Y, and Z book. Send it out to you. Or oh, next time we meet up, can we swap? If you've got something I'd like that we could swap, and that could be something quite fun to do as well. We could look at clothes. So I have a very full wardrobe but I don't go shopping for clothes. I really look after my clothes, the way I wash them and the way I care for them and it means that they last for a long long time. I think this sweater was the last thing I bought and I bought this maybe six months ago. Same for the children, I very rarely buy the children clothes. I did buy my little boy a new coat this week but I bought that out of my grocery budget. It was 11 quid in the sale. I bought it a size and a half up because I know it's then going to last until next year as well because I don't like to spend money on clothes. More often than not, we'll go into charity shops or cabinet sales or we have donated them or on, you know, you've gone to free marketplaces that you can get now. And it's something that we actually enjoy as a family. It's not something that is a punishment. It's not something that is upsetting for anyone in our family. It's something that we pride ourselves on and like, look what we managed to get, look what we managed to save. So maybe have a look at doing something that, again, works for you. Or do a bit of a trade up with somebody else in your family or something like that. What Your circumstances are certainly going to be different to mine. But those are the things that I've done in the past where I've said I've got a bag of X, Y and Z. If anyone's handing anything else down, please can we be considered. Music. You have got these music subscription services that you can sign up to. But actually, we can get music for free. We've got radio, we've got Spotify, we've got YouTube. We've got loads of different places that you can get it for free. It doesn't have to be CDs and things anymore. Just have a consideration about whether you actually need to subscribe to these services or whether that's just a luxury. We didn't need to use them all the time. Didn't Once upon a time, we didn't need them. So why do we need them now? The next section would be the things that we are allowed to replace. The fact is life and things will break, things that we use day to day, things that we need for our convenience, things that we need for our lifestyle might actually get damaged or uh, need replacing. So things like if your oven breaks, if your fridge or your freezer breaks, if your hoover breaks, it would be silly and detrimental not to replace them. If you have those things that need replacing, absolutely go ahead, replace them. Don't, don't you know, beat yourself up about it. What I then might say to you is, hopefully you've got an emergency fund already in place for such an event. If you've not, consider setting yourself like a bit of a savings challenge like uh, I do, where I try and get something into my emergency savings at the moment. I've got about a thousand pounds in there. So if any of my major appliances go, I'm okay for that. And that had just been trickled bits of money that I've thrown in there as I've gone along. Uh, it's not been onerous at all. And it's just been having a frugal lifestyle where I've not been spending on all these things I've been talking about. And it just means that I can put things in there in case there are, is an emergency. Things like dropping your phone and it getting a bit smashed and cracked, like mine did about 18 months ago, doesn't mean that class is an emergency. If it's still working, if it's still, you know, it's not going to cause an injury by using it, just put up with it, just tolerate it. Because after 12 months, if you want to still do this journey, then you might reconsider whether it does need replacing. But after 12 months, if you don't want to do it again, there might be a time to say, well, maybe I do need to upgrade it. But then you might think, think, well, if I've already done it for 12 months, I might as well carry on. I've already used it for so long in this condition, might as well leave it a bit. For me, if children's shoes are a prerogative. I would buy them new shoes. That's not something I'm going to compromise on. If my children need new shoes, then they, they will get them. Uh, for me, however, I only own couple of pairs of shoes that I live in and I if they broke if there was something really wrong with them I would replace them but ultimately I, I don't need anything like that and I, I, I can't see why I would need anything I've got shoes that I've had for literally decades upstairs in the attic that I know if I needed to I could just carry on wearing them over and over so that's not going to be for me but definitely for the children same for underwear if they need underwear I, you know it's I'm not going to make them wear old underwear, old underwear that's broken. I don't want him to feel uncomfortable or, 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 or miss out on anything. Alexander, as I say, is, is three and he is growing and something like underwear, something a bit more personal than that, I think needs to be new. So I wouldn't compromise on that. In terms of spending on the children as well, we do a lot of things that are paid for in advance. So I have a Merlin annual pass. 
I buy his monthly pass for the wacky warehouse for, for the little one. So those are our go-to days out. We do a lot of fun and free days out. I use the I'm Bored Jar quite a lot, which I know a few of you really enjoy, really enjoy using. So I've got that and I allocate a set amount of money to the children every month. It's about £20 and that covers their clubs, their outings, anything else that they want to do. If I think, you know what, I want to spend a bit more on them because it's some holidays or it's a, a big holiday break or whatever it is, I'll plan that in accordingly. But ultimately, I, I want to stick to £20 a month and that is going to be my, my plan going forward. There are loads of things you can do for free, loads of places you can go that are really, really cost effective, especially if you hack into your local council, find out things that are going on at the local library. I've just signed my little one up to a visit with Father Christmas at the local library popped up on my local council Facebook page, didn't know anything about it, give him a ring, he's signed up, it's free, it's arts and crafts, it's a visit from Santa and it's costing me zero. It's things like just putting yourself out there and looking and sometimes they're really easy and they're going to jump up and other times you might have to spend a little bit longer looking but they are definitely out there especially if you've got children. So these are my personal definite no buys going forward for the next 12 months. I, at the start of the year, I was getting my eyebrows done and my nails done and I really did enjoy them. I did end up getting really, really sore nails and they've really uh, thrived from not having gel nail varnish on. My eyebrows haven't been done, I do them myself. They are desperate for being done. They haven't been done professionally for a long, long time. And I keep thinking, do you know what? I coped during COVID. It wasn't the end of the world. I managed during COVID, so why can I not manage? Now, I keep thinking about that time where we didn't spend when it was COVID. We could do it then. We can do it now. So for the next few months, 12 months, I'm not going to be, I'm going to be doing my own nails, do my own eyebrows, do my own hair. I did just recently get it done. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm happy for it to, to grow. Every time I have been in the last 12 months and asked them if I need it cut in, they're like, oh, that's fine. Maybe next time. I'm like, every time I go. So clearly whatever I'm doing to look after it is working. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. I, 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 and if I need to, I can trim it myself again. Did it during COVID. It again i do not need any socks i've got a thousand pairs of odd socks upstairs it's insane because i refuse to throw away um socks that i know has got a part somewhere but also i refuse to wear odd socks it's like a thing so uh, i refuse to buy any more socks that's just not happening in fact if anything i could probably make an entire quilt out of all the odd socks that i've got so that's not happening clothes i've already mentioned that i, I don't plan on buying any new clothes at all I can't see any reason why I would need to. Jewelry is just not my thing. I very rarely wear jewelry. I've got earrings in today just because I spotted them on the side. I think they were gifted a couple of years ago, maybe three years ago. I've got a necklace that I wear every so often, again, if I remember to wear it. I've got watches that I own that I forget to put on and it's just, I'm not a jewelry person at all. So that's not a big deal for me at all. I used to do this all the time with my, my daughter when she was younger. She has a birthday and Christmas right at the same time so i would not give her all her presents at once because a is overwhelming for any child i think when they get a lot of presents and they don't know where to look and they don't know where to to begin they don't know what to play with and then also i would gradually drop them in to her every so often throughout the year so that way she feels like she's been gifted or rewarded with something she's done something well and it just stops that overwhelmingness so that would be one of my top tips for saving on presents and gifts for the kids and things and, and just doing it that way. Final thing is it would be to, to track. If you really want to get the most out of this, I would suggest maybe make a spreadsheet or you can buy the planners, the trackers, whatever you want to do. Just track everything that you've got coming in, track everything got, that you've got going out and then start to watch your savings grow. And if you've got that visualisation, that representation in front of you, you become motivated, you, you become spurred on, you want to do it a little bit more, a little bit faster and everything else. So I would encourage you to yeah, to make that note, to get everything down and watch everything start to come in as you start to have a really successful no spend year. You could twist this. So all of those things that I've talked about, you could say, well, I might not succeed at no spend year, but I'm going to aim for a low spend year or maybe a no spend month, have a bit of a competition with some of your friends, your family, partner whoever it is and say look let's see how many days you can go I can go without spending some money or see how much we can save over the next few days or maybe come up with some sort of pact where one week one of you makes the lunches and the next week somebody else makes the lunches I used to love doing this when I worked in a school we throw a couple of quid into our pot into our kitty and somebody would then buy all the ingredients cook for us 
cook a gorgeous meal and it would be a fantastic way of saving some cash and getting something really tasty and delicious somebody else has cooked it was fantastic you could maybe do something similar to that or a bit of a twist on that try and save yourself some money especially if you know eating out is one of your your vices and that is it so if you have been considering a no spend a low spend no buy year whatever it is i hope you've got some ideas from this video and it's given you a bit of a, a starting point and giving you something to plan towards if you haven't already i would love it if you'd go ahead and subscribe to this channel we do all kinds of things to do with budget and financing minimalist living and just having a great life without having to spend too much cash have yourself an amazing day and i will see you really really soon Bye.